Good morning, Journey. So glad you're here today. Get stand. Let's praise God together today. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in us. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here. We've got a new song for you this morning. It's called The Love of God. It's a great song that reminds us how much God loves us. If you look up, just Google, how much does God love us? It's going to give you a thousand verses telling you about how much God loves us that he sent his own son to die on the cross. So the song talks about that. I want to teach a little bit of it to you so you're not surprised. I've listened to the song probably a thousand times, maybe not quite a thousand, a hundred at least probably. You have it probably. So I want to make sure you know it a little bit. So. Here's how the chorus goes. Singing, oh, how great is the love of God. He paid our debt on that rugged cross. For all our days, we will sing our Savior's praise. How great is the love of God. Let's do that one more time, and then we'll, we'll make sure you have it, and then we'll go into the song. Here we go. Sing it, oh, how great is the love of God. He paid our debt on that rugged cross. For all our days, we will sing our Savior's praise. How great is the love of God. All right, I think you got it. All right, we'll come back to that in a second. He 
It's so good, I almost can't believe it. Far beyond what hearts could ever dream. The God who set the galaxies in motion would be sent to give his life for me. For what could make perfection bleed for sinners? What leads a king to pay so great a cost? All my life, my heart will sing the answer. Only the love of God. All right, here we go. Sing it all.
But God, we need you every hour. We thank you that you never leave us, that you are always there. Through the good times, the bad times, you are always there as our defense, our righteousness. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross, for showing us what love is. God, we will never be able to repay that. We want to praise you, though, because of it. Thank you for your grace, for your mercy. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can have a seat. Thank you, guys. You know, worship was so good this morning. I was drinking coffee and singing at the same time, and I spilled all over myself. So uh, <laughs> do not drink coffee and sing at the same time. But I love that song because, you know, we come here and we need Jesus, right? And we need him no matter what you're going through, no matter what, you, what place, uh, what, what burdens you carry as you walk through these doors. We come together collectively. We come together and we say, I need Jesus. I need him. Uh, in my life. I need his help. I need him to guide me. I need his work. And we can expect that God does something because when we open up the Bible, God speaks to us. And when we worship and praise him, he inhabits the praises of his people. So, um, so it's going to be a great morning, right? Yeah. Are you glad to be here? Yeah. I am glad to be here. Let me give you a quick thing about next week. Next week, we're going to start this series. It's called, Hello, My Name is God, okay? So we're going to talk about what it means for God to, to reintroduce himself to us in, in ways that uh, it doesn't matter what I think God is like or what you think God is like or what our culture think God is like. It, what matters is what God, who God says he is, right? And so we're going to be talking about that. I'm really excited about that for next week. But today what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up this series called The Big Questions with a really big question, and the big question we're going to talk about today is, why should I keep praying? Why should I keep praying? Like, how many times have you been, you know, you're, you're praying about something, and, and it just doesn't feel like anything's happening, or maybe like your prayers, you're not sure if it goes past the ceiling, you're not sure what's happened, or why it's happening, you're, you're kind of, if you're honest, just, just we're hoping something happens, not actually praying. And so what, what do we do when, like, why should we keep praying? And so we conclude, like, well, God, if, if you really cared about me, and you, you could have at least answered my prayer, God. I mean, come on, like, it's, you're the God, you, you can do anything you want to do, and I, it's, my prayer isn't that big of a deal, and you're all powerful, so God, I mean, at least you could have done is you know, someone answered my prayer. And what happens is we come up with all sorts of conclusions. Like, number one, like, well, maybe there is no God. Or number two, like, maybe God doesn't really care about my prayer request or what, what it is that I'm praying about. Or three, maybe he's too busy or he's got something else going on or whatever it is. And so maybe uh, what, what happens is a lot of people just decide to give up on church, to give up on God, to to just, you know, as they say, deconstruct their faith and, and, and reconstruct it in a way that they want to or that's helpful to them. And, and it doesn't work that way. And all of us, you know, it's like we walk through these doors, and I've never heard somebody walk through these doors and say, hey, good morning, Mark. By the way, I'm ready to give up on God, and he's just, he's just not doing anything in my life. I'm just ready to give up. Like, I've never heard anybody say that, but I think a lot of people feel it. You know, a lot of people walk through, maybe you walk through these doors today, and you have these heavy burdens, and you're just not sure, like, you know, maybe you're on the verge of giving up or not believing or, or deconstructing it to something that maybe fits your mind a little bit more. But let's be honest. When God doesn't answer our prayers, and we're genuinely praying and he doesn't answer it the way that we want him to, that can be so frustrating, right? I mean, that can be so demoralizing, so discouraging. And so maybe the question is, is, is why does that happen? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about two things today. Uh, one um, is we're going to talk about how do we pray, and then two, we're going to talk about why we should keep praying, okay? And we're going to do it based on Luke 11, 1 to 10 if you have a Bible or a device with a Bible on it. Or 
the old-fashioned paper Bible, which is really the best kind, right? So uh, you can open it up, <clears throat> Luke 11, verse 1. So here's what, it, here's what the first part says. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. Okay, so you get the sense that, that Jesus is actually praying, and he made prayer a regular habit. He had a certain place and a certain time. You know, it's like he... he he had a place that he went to, and he went there regularly uh, to pray. Now, the first thing off the bat here is, do you have, do I have, do we have a place that we go to for prayer every day? Now, for me, I have a recliner. It's in our living room. Here's my routine. I get a cup of coffee. I get out my Bible. Uh, I do my Bible reading. The dog now comes up. He's a very spiritual dog. He comes up, and he... <laughs> sits on my recliner with me, and we listen to some things, and, and, uh, and then he falls asleep, and I, I don't, but, uh, um, you know, he's learning the Word of God, but I don't know what your place is, but do you have a specific place, There's a, a room, a chair, uh, uh, somewhere that you go? Uh, to me, it works best in the morning, so I don't fall asleep, or I, I certainly don't do it in bed, or I will fall asleep. But look what happens as Jesus was wrapping up his prayer time, the second part of verse 1 here. It says, when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. So this is a common question by uh, Jewish rabbis, teach us to pray. These disciples were, were, uh, were obviously Jewish, and they grew up saying prayers. But what they're saying here to Jesus is so interesting because what they're saying is, Jesus, when we watch you pray, like you're different. You're different than the Pharisees. You're different than the elders. You're different than other people. Like when you pray, Jesus, something happens. Like there's, there's like it's real. It's authentic. It's personal. You're not just going through this religious duties, you know, like you go off for hours and you pray or you go off and you pray all night. And we're all wondering, like, what are you doing, Jesus? And it's, it's genuine. It's authentic. It's not religious. It's real. And, like, you're, you're really praying to someone. So would you teach us to pray like that? That's what, they're, that's what they're getting at. And you know what he says? So It's so interesting. He's like, yeah, I'll teach you how to pray like that. Which implies that there are correct ways and maybe some incorrect ways to pray. Because Jesus doesn't say, he doesn't say this. He doesn't say, don't worry about it. Just pray. Pray however works for you. He doesn't say, you be you, right? He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, you just pray however you feel like praying. You just Whatever works for you, that's what you should pray like. He doesn't say that. He said, yeah, well, sure, I'll teach you how to pray. Which assumes that there are ways to pray, and maybe there's some ways not to pray. And then he leads them into this prayer that has become known as what we call the Lord's Prayer. And he says this, Luke eleven two. 2, he says, when you pray, here's what you say. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who has sins against us, and lead us not, to, not into temptation. Now, you might be here and be like, oh, wait a second. They're like, that's like half of the Lord's Prayer. Like, you missed some of the Lord's Prayer. Like, you know what? What's going on? Well, Luke's version is a little bit shorter than Matthew's version. And this is probably, Luke's version is probably the more authentic version of the Lord's Prayer. It shows that, that Jesus doesn't always say the exact same rote prayer. There's different situations. There's different occasions. Uh, and the thing is, it's not meant to be a formula. It's meant to be a pattern. And so what Jesus was teaching his disciples is a pattern for prayer. A pattern that we should follow when we pray, and it's this pattern that's important. It's not the exact wording, but I want to I give you the pattern here so that you can take this home and, and utilize it, okay? And, and it starts with one. There's five components of the, the Lord's Prayer here, and so I'm, I'm kind of summarizing into these five, five ways, okay? The first one is this. Start with God, not you, okay? Start with God, not yourself, so when you pray, here's what you say, Father, 
hallowed be your name. We start with God. And it's, it's interesting because we, we like to start with ourselves, but we want to force ourselves to start with God. So what is an attribute of God? What is a characteristic of God? What is a name of God? What is something about God that you can start your prayer time? When you're really stressed about your life or what to do about a situation or whatever it is, try to resist the temptation to start with that. Instead, start with, with God. And why is that? Because the more you fix it on the problem, the bigger the problem gets. And the more you fixate on God, the bigger God gets, rightfully so, because he is big. And, and, and so we force ourselves to do this. So things like, um, God, you are the creator of this world. God, you are all-powerful. You... I know you parted the Red Sea, you shut the mouths of, of the lions, you raised the dead, you calmed the storm, whatever comes to your mind. God, I know that, whatever, that, that this problem that I have, that you are way bigger than this. And, and, and I just want to remember that for my sake as I approach you in prayer. That's really what he's saying. That's how we start. Now, the second part, two is this. Your will over my will. Okay? He says, your kingdom come, in Matthew's version, your will be done. So your kingdom come, your will be done, he says. This is so hard. And I don't know about you because I can get, I don't know, like any of us, we can get stubborn, right? We can get self-centered. We can get focused. And what we want is we want our will to be done. We want, we want God, what this is saying is it forces us to say, God, I want your will over my will. And that's not easy because if we're honest and we're praying, we'd really say this, may my will be done. Right? Isn't that what we want? Lord, may my will be done. And so uh, it, it's this battle between the flesh and the spirit, and it's this war inside of us, and, and we're, we're saying, may your will be done over my will. And the beauty is that once we start to do that, and we really trust in God's will, and we surrender to God's will, something begins to happen. We start to live by faith. We live for his kingdom and his purposes. You know, we've used the example before. When you're driving, you know, we just tell, it's like we tell Jesus to hop in, and Jesus says, it's like he's saying, I'll hop in, but give me the keys, and I'm going to drive, and you sit in the passenger seat. You know, like his will over our will. Let him drive over us drive, and Jesus sits in the passenger seat next to us. Okay? So number three, the third part is this. Please provide for my needs. Now, nowhere does it say that you should never eventually tell God what you need, because we should, Right? Give us each day our daily bread. What they needed most back then was daily bread. They needed something to eat. They needed something to live off. And so finally, after the first two prayers, then we come before him with our needs. Like there's, there's an important reason, again, that we do number one and number two first. Start with, with God, right? We talk to the Father about how great the Father is. And then we, we, we pray for his will over our will. And then we come before him and it's like it's okay to bring your stress and your anxieties and your fears and your problems. It's okay. It's good, actually, to bring them before God. He wants us. You know, cast all your cares upon him. It's important. But it's, it's just important to refocus on the first two first, and then we bring uh, him our cares and our worries and our concerns. Nothing is too small for God to care about. Now, number four is he prays, forgive me and help me to forgive others. That's what he's getting at here. Verse four, forgive us our sins, for we, are, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. So forgiveness is one of, obviously, the core concepts of Christianity. To, to have and receive and be able to receive forgiveness that comes from God. To have God forgive us for our sins. Uh, it, it, is, it is 
absolutely essential. So through Christ, through his death, through his resurrection. And therefore, when we receive that, we offer that forgiveness to other people who have sinned against us. It's like a pay it forward. We pass it on. We forgive others because we ourselves have been forgiven. And this is such an important concept that Jesus included in the Lord's Prayer. He's like, keep keep doing that over and over and over. I remember one time I was uh, in our old house where I was up on the roof because our gutters were completely uh, packed with sludge and leaves and stuff. And and I was wondering, I noticed one day like my... Uh, my, my, I, there was no water coming down when it was raining out, so I'm like, I got to get up on the roof. And sure enough, the gutters are absolutely jam-packed with, you know, on the roof with, with leaves. And so I dug my hand down there, and I'm like ripping out this sludge and this leaves and this gunk and all this stuff. And then, and then I, I heard something. I heard a, <laughs> like this bubble come up. You know, and then finally it's like, you know, all this sludge just came out through the downspout. What a great example of our sin, right? I mean, like, once it starts coming, it just flows out. You know, it just, like, it just cleans us out in God's grace. He cleans us out of all of our sin and the sludge that builds up into our into our soul. So we, we get to go to God and we get to experience his forgiveness, right? And at the same time, uh, we tur- in turn, we offer that forgiveness to others around us. So forgiveness is something that is continually circulating throughout the lives of us as believers. And so it's critically important. Number five, the fifth component here is help me to obey. Help me to obey. And that's what it means here when Jesus says, lead us not into temptation. Now, we all know that, that the Bible tells us that God does not tempt us. He never tempts us to, do, to sin or do, to do evil. It's against his holy nature. So every scholar agrees that, that this is saying that we should avoid temptation. Okay, we should obey. Like, God, help me to be faithful. God, help me to not sin. God, help me to do what's right. God, help me to be obedient to you in this situation. So we obey, and so we incorporate obedience into our prayers for God to help us. It's so important. We want to do the right thing. We want to obey. So putting this all together, it looks like this. Again, you start with God, not me. We, we say, your will over my will. And then we say, God, would you provide for my needs? And we say, God, forgive me and help me to forgive others. And then we come to him and we say, help me to obey. And that's the pattern. That's the pattern of the Lord's Prayer. And uh, we'll come back to this if you want to write it down later or whatever. It's in your sermon notes on the app. But uh, you can use this anytime. It's, it's what God has designed ideally for us how to go to him in prayer. So Jesus, Jesus then he goes to part two uh, in his teaching on prayer. And it's like, once you get this pattern down, here's why we should keep doing it. Here's why we should keep praying and not give up. So think about this. Jesus could have taught about anything about how to pray. But Jesus uses their question about how to pray to go straight into a discussion about what frustrates us most about prayer. You know, you know what it is? We don't get what we want from God. And God doesn't answer our prayers in the way that we like. So what do you do? Well, he tells us a parable. Verse 5. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine is on a journey and has come to me and I have no food to offer him. Now, when it says then, it's like, while we're on the subject of prayer, let me give you the scenario. Let me give you a story. Here's how it goes. Okay, let's say you're in bed and a friend comes over in the middle of the night and he knocks on your door. And he's like, man, I, I got some, some friends, and they're coming over, and I, I got to feed them. Can I borrow some bread? 
Now, you're like, it's the middle of the night. I'm sleeping. Go home, all right? But then he keeps doing it. And, and back then, of course, they didn't have, you know, Walmarts or Quick Trips or grocery stores or whatever that are open late at night. So there's nothing he could do. So verse 7, and suppose the one inside says, answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked. My children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. So the guy in the house is like, go away. <laughs> you can't really blame him. It's, it's interesting because in the Middle Eastern culture back in those days, to, to think about how they slept, the best way to think about it was like camping in a tent, right? Like you, they all slept like next to each other and in their, in their rooms and guys in one room and girls in the other room and so forth. So you can't just get up out of bed without waking up the entire family. So he's like, I can't get up. I can't get you anything. Plus you woke me up and I'm really cranky. So Jesus says something fascinating in verse 8. He says, I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, Yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Now, in Middle Eastern culture, again, hospitality was a huge deal. They would, you, would, you would always try to be hospitable to people around you. Uh, it would be shameful to not uh, give uh, bread for a guest or someone in need. It, maybe it would be like today, if, you know, like a, on a hot day like we've had over the last several days, super hot. You know, let's say I, I come over to your house and you have like this, this cold ice bottles of water in, in, in your cooler or whatever, and, and you don't give me a drink. You don't offer me. You know, like that's kind of the, the idea uh, of, of what's, what's happening. But you don't give up. You don't stop. The NIV uses the word shameless audacity. The New Living Translation uses the word persistence. The point is, is that the neighbor won't stop asking. He doesn't stop asking. He doesn't give up asking. He won't quit. And so finally, he's knocking and knocking until the guy gets out of bed and says, good grief, you've got to be kidding me. And he get, you know, he's all angry and he's upset. And he's, he does it and, and he gets out of bed. And he climbs up, wakes up everybody in the house, turns on the light, goes into the kitchen to get this guy some bread. And I'll probably say, take some bread and get out of here. Leave me alone. I'm tired and I want to go back to bed. And Jesus is saying that if he doesn't do it out of friendship, just because he's irritated and the guy won't leave him alone, he's going he's gonna to get up and give you some bread. Now remember, this is a parable, right? And a parable isn't necessarily a historical event. It's a message with a meaning behind the message. And, um, and so, so the disciples that are listening to this, they're like, okay, um, in a parable, someone is me and someone is God, right? So the disciples are thinking, um, okay, who do you think is us? Like, we must be the annoying guy knocking on the door, right? Because Jesus is talking about prayer. And that would make God like the grumpy old man inside that doesn't want to give up. And so maybe they're thinking, this is so weird. Like, I don't really know if I get this. Uh, and they're trying to figure this out. It kind of reminds me of the story of a, of a guy who worked from uh, 4 o'clock to midnight. And he would walk home. And he'd be wa walking home in the dark. And he decided that he could shave off five minutes from his walk home if he walked through the cemetery. So it's midnight. It's after midnight. He's walking through the cemetery. It's really extremely dark on one particular night. And uh, he's, as he's walking, he, he ends up falling into a freshly dug hole, a, a grave. And, and he's, he's kind of, he's panicked. You know, he's like, how am I going to get out of here? And he's scraping and he's clawing. He's not sure what, what he's going to do. And, and so finally he's like, there's, he yells for help and there's nobody around and it's completely dark. And, and so finally he just kind of pulls up his jacket, goes into the corner of the, the grave and he tries to fall asleep, and he'll figure it out in the morning when it's light out. Well, about an hour later, he hears this noise and this big thump, 
and he realizes that somebody else had walked, was walking along in the grave, and it's completely dark, and this guy's like, help, help, I need, I, I can't, can't get out, and he's screaming, and he's yelling, and he's clawing, and he's scratching, and he doesn't know what to do, and then finally when the guy, uh, when, the, when the guy settles, settles down, um, he, he says to him, you're never going to get out that way. This voice, you're never going to get out that way. And he, he uh, clawed and scratched his way out because he was so frightened by this guy, that voice that he didn't even see he was there. And there's just something about, like, you find a way, right? When, when you need to figure something out and you're, you just you do what you need to do and you figure it out and you don't give up and you're persistent and I was thinking about this because, in a way, I think God desires for us to keep being persistent in our prayers. Now, I love to give my kids what they want. Now, I don't always give them what they want because it may not be what they need, right? But when it doesn't hurt them or whatever, it's, you know, um, it's fun to give them something if they want something. And I think the important thing about this prayer is actually the beginning where he says, our Father. Because we're praying to our Father, and our Father is someone who loves us like a loving Father would love his children. Now, do you know that, that Jesus, it's almost like he's saying, and this is so important, we can't miss this. He's saying, God is not bothered by our persistence it actually seems like it touches his heart when we continue to go to him in persistence and ask him. It kind of touches him. He likes that. He's glad that we keep going to him. He's not irritated by it. And so we keep asking and asking and asking, even when nothing happens. And we keep coming back and coming back and coming back. And we don't give up, and we don't give up, and we don't give up. And it's like God is honored by the fact that we keep coming to him in prayer. So again, the pattern that we've been talking about, as we keep doing this pattern, we start with God, right? Your will over my will. Um, please provide for my needs. Forgive me and help me to forgive others. Help me to obey and to not give up. And we keep praying this over and over, and, and, and we don't give up. You know what happens? We're drawn closer to God in the process. And then... It's like Jesus in case, saying, in case you missed everything I've talked about so far, he goes to verse 9. And here's what he says. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. So the significance is, uh, of this verse is not that there's something mysterious about asking and seeking and knocking. He says, he's basically saying the same thing three different ways. But what he's saying is, is that 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 Ask and seek and knock and don't give up. And Jesus says, you ask me how to pray. I'm not telling you how to pray. I'm telling you what to do. I'm telling you this pattern. Start with God. Your will over my will. Please provide for my needs. Forgive me and help me to forgive others and help me to obey. And as you're doing that, something is going to start happening inside of you. And in verse 10, he wraps us all up and he says, for everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. So, some of you maybe are thinking, I've been praying for something for a really, really long time. And nothing has happened. And it's something really important. Something that's really troubling you. Something that's really stressing you out. And Jesus understands that, and sometimes he waits to answer that prayer because he wants us to keep knocking and seeking and asking, and he doesn't want us to give up. He's honored when we stick close to him. Sometimes when we give up or when a prayer is answered, we stop seeking him. 
So God does something in the asker and the seeker and the knocker. Persistent prayer. It actually teaches us about ourselves. So listen, if God doesn't answer our, your prayer in the way that you want it, you want to be persistent and not give up. Follow the pattern. Sometimes God does a work in our hearts. Sometimes he, uh, he wants to do something inside of us first. And then maybe he's like, great, now that I got your attention, uh, let's address some other things that are going on inside as well. The other thing that happens is that we, we get locked in on praying for something, and we're asking and seeking and knocking, and we don't give up. And after t- some time, God reveals that we're praying for the wrong thing, and he changes the direction of our prayers. Maybe it's not like God fix that person. It's like God is saying, fix me. And so what I'm saying is, is God will do something. Um, sometimes the thing that... He'll, he'll do the very thing we ask for, but it's not always on our timetable or schedule. And sometimes he'll do something inside of us while we're waiting, and sometimes he'll reveal to us we're, we're praying for the wrong thing. But he tells us to never give up. What have you given up on when it comes to praying? Maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's rebellious kids, maybe it's your job, maybe it's that annoying neighbor, <laughs> maybe it's something else, your finances or your, you know, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. Is there anything that you're so locked in on that you're so burdened about and you're so concerned about that every time you pray, you're like, God, please, I know it seems impossible, but please, please please bring them back or please help my family or please heal them or I'm going to pray and I'm going to seek and I'm not going to give up. I'm going to continue to do it over and over. And you know what happens? It's almost like it stirs the heart of God. Jesus could have taught on anything when he taught on prayer. But he gave them a pattern to follow and he gives us a pattern to follow. And then he teaches us to not give up. So what I wanted to do is do a group activity here before we're done. Let me show you. We're going to keep this on the screen the whole time. This is the pattern of the Lord's Prayer. And I just want to invite you to to do, let's do this together. And I'll kind of prompt us through, but then you can can be praying on your own through this, okay? Okay. So here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with whatever it is that's burdening you today. So what is it that's burdening you? What, what's, what's heavy on your heart? What is the, the tension? What is the issue that you're facing that you're ready to give up on right now with God? And, and can you identify that? So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through this. I'm going to kind of prompt you through and give you a few seconds for each one. Okay, you ready? We're going to start with God, not me. So whatever it is that you're struggling with, start with God. So would you just kind of bow your heads and say, okay, God, I'm going to start with you. You are all-powerful. You are big. You are sovereign. And you fill in the rest. Something about God. Start with God, not yourself. Start with something about God, his character, his attributes, something. Just on your own, talk to him about that. Start with God. And we're going to go to the second part, and we're going to say, Lord, may your will be done over my will. Lord, I know I just want what I want, and... But I'm just going to try to surrender myself to your will. I want to give over to you the keys. I want to I wanna have you drive. I want to ask your will for my life over my own will. And sometimes that's hard. So go ahead and just ask God your will over my will.
And now we come before him and we say, Lord, here's what I need. I, here's what, I'm just going to pray for my needs. And remember, he cares about all your needs. He cares about uh, all your concerns, even the small ones that you might think is small to you. He cares about your needs. He doesn't say, don't bring your needs to me. He, he says, bring them to me. Start with God, not ourselves. Pray your will over my will, and then bring your needs to him. So what is it that you feel like you need? The fourth part is forgive me and help me to forgive others. So let's start with the first part of that, forgive me. Is there something in your life that is out of bounds, that is out of, um, that is sin? That is something that, you know, maybe it's an attitude about somebody. Maybe it's the language you use. Maybe it's uh, the, the, you know, something going on, the way you've treated somebody, whatever it is. Just first start by asking him to forgive you. And then help me to forgive others. You know, somebody doesn't have to ask you to forgive them for you to forgive them. And that's a whole other topic. But for now, is there somebody that you need to forgive in your life that's hurt you? You can do it because God has forgiven you and you've hurt God. And he wants us to reciprocate that. And then finally, finally the last part is help me to obey. Is there something that God would want you to do as a result or for you to be obedient in this situation, to follow him? Help me to obey. And maybe you'd pray, Lord, help me to have the courage to do the right thing because I know that doing this is going to honor you. Help me to obey. So together, Lord, we come before you, and you know every single situation on each one of our minds. You know the stress, the anxiety, the fears, the tension, the issues, and the problems. You know the weight that we're carrying. And as we are learning to pray this way, and as we're learning to be persistent and to not give up, may you do the work that you want to do in us, and may you do the work that you would want to do in the situation that we're concerned about. We lift it up to you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Mark, and thank you for coming. We are going to be here each week for you, for each other, and for our uh, community. Just a couple quick notes before... Uh, before we, we end things, um, first of all, if you are new to Journey, we would love for you to text the word welcome to the number on the screen and to stop by the welcome desk on your way out for a free gift. We encourage all of you to text the word connect to the same number on the screen. This is the, really the best way to ask for prayer uh, and other information. Uh, everything I'm about to share next, uh, you'll be able to sign up for or get more information on uh, via the app, uh, which you can scan uh, right here um, to download that, our website, or also you can stop by the welcome desk. Well, do you like candy? Okay, and do you like bingo? And if you are um, uh, willing, willing to join us on Tuesday, August 20th, the Journey Kids is putting together a fun bingo and candy night. Candy bar bingo is actually what it's called. And it's a great way to get to know other families with kids. Uh, to get to know some of the Journey Kids leaders and to have a great time. Uh, next Sunday is our first ever leadership kickoff. 
Uh, we all lead in some areas of our lives, whether it be at, in our home, at uh, uh, you know, our, our, our place of work, and even at church here. So really, this is a great opportunity for, for all of us to just get an enhanced uh, training and it's uh, only $5 next week is when it is. Please sign up on uh, the app. First uh, Chronicles 29, 14 to 16 says, But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given, and we have given you only what comes from your hand, and it all belongs to you. So this, this shares that all that we have uh, comes from the Lord, and it is really a, a privilege and, and, and an honor to, uh, to be generous with what God has given us. So we thank you for your generosity, and if Journey is your home, uh, we encourage you to worship the Lord through one of the ways on the screen. Uh, please stand, and let's pray as we close the service. Father God, we thank you for this time today. Lord, we thank you that you want us to be persistent uh, in coming to you with prayers, Lord, and help us to, to just to follow the, the pattern that you have laid out in Scripture uh, as we uh, enter into this next week. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week.